Hello, welcome to the Thursday, December 21st, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. One of the most basic and foundational parts of any operating systems, be it Windows or Unix, is the kernel. Now, malware, of course, tries to modify and hide itself from the kernel because if it can accomplish that, it makes it a lot more difficult to detect and remove. And if you're interested in how this all works, how attackers get access to the kernel, how you may be able to detect it, we do have a great guest diary today by Ed Heinier. Pretty long read compared to some of our other diaries, but certainly worthwhile for you to go over it. Maybe, just maybe, it's a little bit slower at work today, so that may be ideal to take a stab at learning something like how kernel hooking works. And one of the up and coming security technologies is memory encryption. Now we long have had a full disk encryption. Memory encryption has been tricky for a number of reasons. First of all, performance of course could suffer, which is particular critical for memory. And then also how do you store keys and how meaningful is it to actually encrypt memory? Well, Intel now published their take on the problem with a new specification for total memory encryption. One interesting feature here is that the memory can actually be segmented into different encrypted parts. This is of course particularly interesting for virtualization where you can add an additional barrier here between memory used by different virtual machines by encrypting it using different keys. AMD is also working on a similar technology that has already been deployed in some of its processors and Linux actually just started supporting this technology on a virtual machine level. So with this, uh, you can encrypt memory for each virtual machine individually, which actually not only hides it from other virtual machines, but also from the host. AMD calls this Secure Encrypted Virtualization or short SEV. So if you're seeing this feature with a processor, it may be able to support this type of encryption. Now, given how new all of this is, I would still rate it as somewhat experimental, uh, but certainly nothing wrong with giving it a try and see if it actually works or whether or not it has performance issues for some of your applications. And looks like WordPress blogs are under a pretty strong brute force attack according to WordFence. WordFence, I mentioned them yesterday about the backdoor catch-up plugin for WordPress. Uh, WordFence actually does offer web application firewall service and such for WordPress. So that's where they collect some of this data from. And uh, what they found is that this password brute force attack then attempts to install a Monero miner on these vulnerable blocks. So no actual vulnerability in the WordPress code being used here, but instead just brute forcing admin passwords. According to WordFence, this was the strongest brute force attack that they have seen, which peaked at 14 million attacks, so password attempts per hour. WordFence speculates that this is really more credential stuffing using the large password and username database that was released earlier this month. There was a very large database with something like 1.4 million billion username and password pairs. The largest ones that I've seen before that is sort of in the 100 million range. So it's certainly possible that these new credentials are now being used in this attack. Well, and the zip for today. Now, next week, I will not have a podcast, so there will be one more tomorrow for Friday. But uh, given the holidays, uh, we usually don't have a lot of listeners anyway, so I'll take next week off. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.